Now I'll uh, we'll just start and we'll record the rest. So those who will join later on, they can be able to listen to the entire session because uh, uh, we have a limited time. And I'll just request uh, Pastor Kahindi to open with a word of prayer, and then we can proceed. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an opportunity as this. My God, I thank you for every person that has been able to connect and every person that Lord you shall allow to connect. As God we interact in this session, we pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us, be with us. Let us learn something from this, Lord, for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and believe. Amen. 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 So I will do a quick uh, introduction just to set the context of the meeting. And then after this, uh, I will welcome uh, uh, Rosemary Oshira to give us an experience from uh, the church in the other continent. And then uh, we'll move on to uh, Pastor Fidel in Rwanda. And then we'll get to, past, uh, to Bishop Christopher Wanyeki in Kenya. And then we'll do a wrap, a wrap up. So it's a brief session, but I'm sure there is so much that we're going to learn from each other and uh, to help the, child, the body of Jesus Christ. I think at this time there are many questions uh, and our focus is more on the leadership uh, perspective. So whatever we discuss today, we'll try and share it with more uh, pastors, more leaders, so that they can be able to benefit from this experience. Otherwise, uh, probably I will request if you are not speaking, maybe you can mute your, your microphone uh, to avoid uh, echo. And then uh, if you experience any uh, low connection, it is okay to turn off your video and then turn it back. Uh, that, that is, it's okay for now. So this is the, the program or just the activities, the agenda of today, as I've mentioned, we are already learning uh, behind time, so I'll be quite uh, fast. Uh, just to set the, the conference perspective, why we, we felt it's important to have this uh, session, there's a lot of changes that is happening now, rapidly, and also constant transition which have made leadership not just a, a normal role or function, but it, it's becoming more complex and challenging because of the rapid change, as I will explain what are the factors, or what are the sources of this change that we are talking about. So in really sense, we are saying change is becoming a normal. So it's something that we, we as leaders, and the good thing with the, the mindset of a leader is always uh, that transition or growth or we always we are always looking forward to what is new yeah a manga a leader can dismantle what is working and reorganize it in a new way because it's all about progress so uh, change is part of the normal now and then uh, the people we are leading are also confronted by the same issues of transition. A lot is transitioning now. Uh, you see now we are having online uh, conference and this is part of the transition. And how do we adopt ourselves and how do we help the people that we are leading to be able to adopt in this change that uh, we, we are facing now. So leaders, as leaders, we have, a, we have no choice but to adapt and to help others also to be able to adapt. So, and the good thing that we need, we appreciate is that people adapt at different paces and uh, in various ways, depending on the environment. If it is context of technology, maybe those who are advantaged in terms of connectivity, the adoption can, can be much faster. So based on the different uh, environment and the individual, uh, it determines the pace of adoption. So uh, leadership today, I think we can say that uh, it's a role that is, is having more demand and more pressure. 
because you are leading people who are also under pressure and you as a leader you are under pressure when i look at our minister of finance uh, health i can read pressure uh, and not only him all leaders now there is more pressure from the top to perform there is more pressure from the, the, the citizen probably you may not make decisions that are favorable uh, in a way or another so it's really dynamic we're talking about dynamic leadership but above all leadership is essential is critical and uh, it's why we need to invest more in such kind of discussion but bringing it back or narrowing it down to the context of the church because this is why we are holding this session today we are saying the church is the only organ that can instill permanent change in society because it transforms the inner man the true change is always inside out transformation and i think among the the institutions or the, the organs that really deal with the inner man it's basically the church and uh, this reaffirms the church's place and also value in society and in this period this is critical because the government has its own priority and uh, sometimes maybe we might feel like we, we, we are out of place in a way but i think it's good to remind ourselves and to appreciate the pivotal role, role we are playing in society so uh, as we discuss today we'll be focusing on uh, we'll be able to pick the long-term aspect from our discussion and also the short-term aspect uh, the long term is what we should adopt to secure the future and how we should adopt to be able to secure the future adapt and adopt those are two different uh, aspects and also in terms of short term what can i do to thrive to survive? yeah so you, as we, we as we listen to the speakers we can filter what do i pick for now and why, what do i pick for the future but uh, the key aspect here is that we must focus on long term goals or the vision to protect us from being distracted by the short term crisis yeah and uh, we are adopting what you are calling ambidextrous leadership model where you focus on the long term but you still address the present so it's a two arm um, leadership you lead with the two hands one is exploring future opportunities and the other hand is exploiting the current opportunities so uh, this this I, I really want us to see what is working now how do i bring it on board and how do i need to prepare because more change is coming so that we can be able to uh, uh, remain relevant in society there is a, a another who's who uh, I, I read one of his book and i felt this is a good uh, quote to set the context in terms of resilience versus resistance anytime there is change these two aspects they come out so clear in the initial stage you can read a lot of resistance and uh, with the time there is a transition uh, even when this pandemic started we suffered or we went through the same because there is there are, there are stages of crisis and the first always starts with denial and uh, that is what we term as resistance uh, resistance so what this other said the most successful people and organization are not those with thick skin or iron will but rather those most able to disintegrate and reintegrate quickly and successfully so uh, this is really important for us because in a way th there are issues that will disintegrate but it's not for bad it's for good but it start with appreciating uh, that uh, we are in a change and uh, we, 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 we shift our mindset from the victim uh, and start exploring the opportunities that this crisis is coming with. 
uh, organizational resistance requires proactive and evolving and adoptive strategy for leadership. So those are three very important aspects, proactive, uh, evolving and adoptive strategy for leadership is very key and leaders must make room for unthinkable. Yeah, uh, I think th th this, is, this is really very interesting and uh, very deep issues that we need to keep on engaging more because the, the environment, we are already in an environment that is very dynamic. And that means even us as leaders, that aspect of being dynamic has to be part and parcel of us. So when you talk about resi resilience, there is what we call the resilience rating, starting from change of us. And this is almost where everybody starts because uh, the change of us, we start with a negative short-term reaction to change. And I think we, this is something that uh, we have witnessed uh, in countries, uh, individual levels, uh, and uh, it's natural, but it can be avoided or at least mitigated. And uh, as we move slowly, we get into slow acceptance and change. And then now we move on to the change agent. Uh, and uh, this is when we are able now to quickly adjust and take, these are the people who take the lion's share. And I think this is what we really want to build, that the church can be, despite what we have gone through, can we metamorphose as quickly as possible? Can we come from the change of us, if there are any uh, institutions or churches that are still there, those who are in slow pace to adopting change, and then we shift to the change agent so that we can optimize the opportunities that are available now. So this is really important. And uh, the context, the other context we are holding this conference is also to deal or to address issues of crisis leadership. And uh, when crisis strikes, the first response of the people is often to look for a leader. But the most interesting thing it's that there are normally leaders in place, even before crisis. But what happens is that people adjust and uh, people start looking at someone who can understand them, someone who can feel them, someone who can uh, flow with them. So the person who can sacrifice to lead the way through that uncertainty becomes their leader. Uh, so it's good to understand people's behavior as leaders so that we can uh, be able to, uh, we don't create a gap and uh, remaining or assuming we are still leading and uh, maybe we, we, we have disintegrated or we have created a gap with the people that we are leading. So can our followers find us, identify us as their leaders? What happens with the crisis? It triggers survival, self-preservation behavior. Or instinct. Yeah, so if we understand this, then it will help us to know who are we dealing with and what are they thinking and how do we approach and uh, connect with the people that we are leading. So in crisis leadership, uh, whether an organization survives, it purely depends on the leadership. And uh, crisis, someone said, is a textbook of leadership. What we were not taught, we can now learn in real time. Yeah, we can learn in real time. We can learn as we lead. This is the mindset that we are adopting in this kind of a setup that we are facing now. So crisis almost always will give way to something better. And it serves to show where the systems are weak. So we'll understand where our systems have been weak as leaders, either in the, uh, from the smallest unit of a family, a church, an organization, it will expose so much. And I think this, this is really an opportunity, but this will help us with that quick shift of the mindset so that we can start exploring what is on the table. So it's another opportunity to learn and also to unlearn because probably what worked may not work from now henceforth. So we need to unlearn and learn the new strategies of leadership and also to build. So our systems and also having more adoptive uh, system. So crisis does not mean we stop. It means we think 
and we re-strategize, rethink and also re-strategize. I shared this image of, of Jesus Christ and uh, what happened, uh, this is the story of uh, Jesus and the disciples in a storm. And uh, what happened uh, is that Jesus was asleep and there was a, a big storm. But uh, what, I'm, what, what I was bringing on board is that this is the context that we are in now and the reaction of Jesus is very important to us. How he reacted. And the first thing is that he dealt with the issue before even dealing with the people. And uh, we, we, we can pick a lot uh, from such kind of, uh, uh, because I think for me, when I'm looking at the stories of Jesus, I try to look what are the leadership aspects that we can be able to pick from uh, his context. And uh, he's also giving us a very good uh, uh, reaffirmation that uh, he's our captain and he's, he's in charge. So we are in charge now, and I'm sure as we adopt some of these strategies, we'll be able to move through and win in this battle. So as I conclude, the, the, the change that we are talking about, we are talking about leading in changing times. And uh, the change that we are facing now may not really be internally uh, activated or motivated. It's more of external, external factors that are shifting the entire uh, system. And some of these, or the key among them is what we are calling globalization. And the globalization has a number of aspects, starting with the technological advancement, uh, social uh, globalization, uh, globalization, financial, cultural, economic, and uh, also we have the issue of uh, political. But the key now, I think what is coming out clear, and even from the platform that we are using, is uh, on uh, technological globalization. It's really bringing on board a lot of shift, even the others, the, the, the others to do with the political and all that, because uh, globalization is getting away the barriers that used to exist. Now you can sit and discuss with someone in Maryland, someone in Kigali, Rwanda, someone in Kenya, and it means the boundaries now, uh, those bound, physical boundaries are no longer a stumbling block because other aspects have come on board. So our interaction and integration among people, organization and government worldwide has, is really being one of the aspects to do with the globalization. So it's a driver and it's, uh, it's uh, driven by advancement in transportation and communication. So rapid globalization is creating significant, significant challenges for leaders at all levels. Because for organization of, and organization of all sizes, this is because of interpenetration of cultures, principles, beliefs, and cost, uh, customs or cost. You see, this thing started from China and it's now a global, it's a global pandemic. So uh, a leader in China, and a leader in Kenya, whatever hits Kenya, a leader in Maryland needs to start preparing because you never know. Now the boundaries are not there and maybe in the next few minutes it will land on the other side. Uh, let me not talk about this much, but I wanted just to give a picture of uh, how technological globalization is really growing. And we can see in terms of the population the world population, this is the UN statistics 2019, uh, 7.6 billion people. And we are talking about unique mobile users are 5.1 billion and internet users are 4.3 billion. So this is a big mass and a big platform that uh, we can optimize to be able to pass this message of Jesus Christ. Uh, I think I will pause here. And then I will move on to our next speaker. I'll come back later on just to do a conclusion and a summary and also to engage uh, with the participants who are on board. Uh, but for now, allow me to uh, recognize our second, our, our first speaker, uh, Rosemary Awashira. Maybe she will just uh, do a brief introduction 
and then she will continue from there. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Hello, church. It's great to see everybody online. I'm in Maryland, uh, Rosemary Washira. My church here is called City Light Church. It's in Towson, Maryland. And the church uh, pastor is aware that I was uh, in this group meeting and he sent his greetings. So I receive his greetings. Yes, thank you. And today I'm gonna try and share. I'm not very technological, I'm trying, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I can share my screen or not. I could try. Oh, I guess I cannot. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, is that doable? <laughs> All right, thank you so much for inviting me to this Global Church Conference 2020. And um, talking about change, I really appreciate what you shared about the changes that are taking place. And I'm sharing just a few points on what the changes uh, we are experiencing here in Maryland while we are going through this heavy, heavy uh, COVID in uh, the USA. And I'm going to share these few points. How we are coping with change uh, during these current times and how the church here is using resources, the different resources. And uh, also we're gonna talk about continuous communication uh, between the church, the leaders, the church pastors, and you know the overall church as a whole. And then also I'm gonna to touch a little bit on how the church is helping in the community or taking part in the community because there are many, many people who are not working and the church is taking part uh, in that and how we are doing that. All right, so uh, the global changes are happening in technology, church and technology. Church is now using what our parents would never have thought that we could use uh, as something to share messages in church. Of course, they never use videos. We have uh, used videos, but now we have gone beyond using the videos. We are no longer using the platforms that we are used to. Uh, and this little photo here, the pastor is preaching, but you can see there's only one person in the building. We are not used to seeing something like that. We're using to fool churches everywhere. But the adjustment has come and we gotta make change and do that. There are many churches that already had media platforms. They were already set up. They had video equipment while they were mega churches. They were using the videos to post on TV or post on online. Um, but there are other small churches like the church that I'm in that was not using big media platforms. They were not used to videotapes or even posting on television. So we had to make a different type of adjustment compared to the mega church. But all of us are affected. All of us are making change. So whether we have the established media or media ministry uh, or not, we had, we had to make change. And the quicker we adjust, the better we are and we are able to serve the community better once we make that adjustment. Some people are still using this live streaming uh, while you, you know, empty seats, but you're still using your media ministry to live stream while the, the uh, service is being live, live streamed to the members and maybe even to more than that, to other people. However, it's of, of course, looks like it can be very emotional, it's training to the pastor just staring at chairs and staring at space uh, and bringing a couple of, of people to church, allowed members, 10 maximum in any building. So even managing something like that, you have to bring 
a, a two or three people choir to be videotaped singing. You have to bring in the media equipment team, which can only be the same, the same 10 people. So my pastor tried uh, to live stream in our church. And uh, of course he was inviting just uh, two choir leaders to come and sing, people working on the equipment, but that also changed. So change is continuous. It went from uh, that small, like the live streaming in church to a small space inside the church, inside his home, sorry. So the pastor is now videotaping for us and we join on YouTube. Most churches are also using Zoom. Uh, but there are so many ways to communicate that we, you know, we have been able to see even other ministries take over and start preaching uh, to everyone not just to their team, not just to their church, but to others. They send messages to other people. So uh, we're no longer doing our praise and worship as usual, but we have adjusted and using more praise and worship tapes or praise and worship videos. That's how we're coping uh, with different things. So a very small thing can make a big difference. A very small uh, WhatsApp something like WhatsApp or text messages can hold the same church and send messages to the groups. The most important thing is the pastors have to um, communicate. Right? So communication assignments are also needed. Why? Uh, if you have too many people communicating on that WhatsApp or too many people sending church messages, pastor's assistant sending a message, another member sending a message, it confuses the whole team or the group as to what time are we praying? What time are we meeting? Are we having a women's meeting? Like yesterday, we had a women's meeting on Zoom. But there's two selected people who can send that message and the links so that we're keeping open and good communication. You select a few people who are dependable and can send those messages on time because no one is going to the church anymore. So we are depending on communication by WhatsApp and communication by messages to know when to meet on Zoom or to know when to meet on YouTube. So it, it's very effective. So if you don't have a big platform, the chat still goes on. You're using WhatsApp or you're using just a small phone to text your message to um, other media and the church gets that message. So one another important thing is to make sure that the church is, you know, is down. People are, uh, are working in hospitals that are full of sick people. So they're, they're feeling like they're a little bit depressed. So this is the time to send messages and remind us words of encouragement. Bible quotes. You can do all things through Christ who, you know, who strengthens you. You can send a simple message and it will encourage the church. It will keep the church connected. Right? They look forward to getting a message from the pastor maybe every other day or once a day. Just encouraging us. Right? So um, that's another one of the things that we are currently doing. Uh, the other thing is taking advantage of the, ch the bigger church as it is, the body of Christ. In the area that we are, we are the, our church is located in a place called Towson, Maryland. And it has a bigger group of churches that are connected. So because we are connected to those groups, we are connected to the church, the body of Christ. We are able now to provide outreach. So when a, a need is there, we always have homeless people. I know it doesn't look like that in America. Uh, we have a lot of homeless people. We have a lot of people who have no food and the church has to reach out. So there is one church that has a location where people can come and pick up food when needed. Uh, and there's a place even where they leave food outside in little bags that are set up, little sets. You get dry goods like beans, uh, food that can help the kids who are hungry. And they set it outside the church, people know where to come because there's a connection between churches. If, you, if your people are hungry, they call your pastor, but that pastor doesn't have the resources 
but we'll call another pastor and send the people there. So it's the communication and reaching out to those in need. That's what the church is supposed to do at this time of crisis. And we are, um, City Light is taking part in that. Yeah. So we're also using the available resources in the community. We're using the resources that we have. The people that you have as a pastor, who can you send to do ABC? Who can you call and ask them to go and do this ministry? Because we are no longer, you know, staying in groups where you say this is the ministry of uh, health, you know, go and pray for the sick in a hospital. But who can you call to pray for that one person that is in the hospital or that one person that is, you know, in the house sick? So we have those kind of uh, resources being available. And the other thing that uh, the church is doing is taking advantage of any special thing going on. Today is Mother's Day, and I'm sure it's Mother's Day all over the world, right? Mother's Day is one of those um, holidays. It's almost like a holiday in the U.S., so in Maryland, people go shopping as if they're going for Christmas shopping. They buy a lot of things. Economically, this is a big, big, it's a, it's a big effect that Mother's Day, no one could go shopping, right? And of course, all the kids come to church with the parents. So it's another way for uh, pastors to minister to the youth, to minister to the young, uh, to the young adults, because that's, the t that's one time they will come and take part in church. So what, they, what they're doing today, most churches are offering, even if it's a flower, even if it's a cupcake. <laughs> they love cupcakes. So um, they're doing ministry in another way. So they created a way to send messages to people saying, this, our church will give such and such at 10 o'clock. And all you have to do is drive through since we cannot have groups. Right. So you come in and you pick up what you're picking up. But they're able to give those messages as, uh, as you go through. They give a message. They give you a written message that you can read. They give you a word of encouragement that you can read. So ministry is being transformed like we've never seen. We never ever had a ministry where you're just driving by the church, being given by the people who are waiting outside in different locations to distribute what they have. But this is um, a change that has taken over because it's, it's global. Uh, I'm sure every country has a way that today they are dealing with church and Mother's Day. That's what we're doing uh, in the U.S. So we're using the little media resources that we have. We're using the big resources that we have in mega churches. We're using TV ministry. But mostly we're using simple media equipment like WhatsApp. We're using a lot of Facebook and uh, Zoom for prayers. And we're getting great testimonies of what God is doing, even using the Zoom, using prayers for those people who have been affected by COVID in hospitals and being prayed for by the church. So um, I would encourage all of us to, like um, Joseph had said, to just take advantage of this and use it to promote the word of God. I know I've been getting messages on WhatsApp from pastors that I have never communicated with, but because they had my phone number, they are sending the messages of their preaching for the day to everybody on their list. So it, it's reaching out to more people, All right? So prayer meetings by Zoom, very, very important to keep the church going, to keep the church connected, right? God is the first, God was the first one to invent uh, communication by what we call prayer. It's a word activated. Prayers are just activated by the word. We don't need to use Zoom when we need prayer. Uh, we don't need to talk to God through any media. He has a direct connection, direct connection. So uh, we're using that as a as, as, at a time like this to pray for one another, to pray for the church and encourage one another. So one of the scriptures that we've been sharing as a, uh, as a church is Exodus 12. Why we share this? Because this uh, country is really hit by this COVID crisis. 
So we cover the church in the blood. That, that scripture says that the, when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, they were told to put the blood on the doorposts. Right? So that when this crisis or this uh, calamity is passing over, it will not affect them. And we pray that scripture whenever we have a meeting, we speak Psalm 91 over the church and we keep, our, keep ourselves covered in the blood of Jesus that way, praying for the church. So, th so that, those are the only changes that I have. I know it's short, but I thank you for um, the time that you're sharing with me. Thank you. Yeah, I was saying, can we clap for her together? Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> uh, it, it was wonderful, very practical. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and also, I'm sure uh, as we listen to the uh, comments from participants, we'll be able mm -hmm. to get one or two. I don't know how long we're going to have you because uh, we might have some questions from uh, the participants. Uh, I wanted us to move to Rwanda, but uh, I want to know how long we, we're going to be with you. If there will be no time, we can. No, I can. I can wait. I told the person I'm in this group meeting. You so okay? I'll probably be a few minutes late. Ah, that's great. Then uh, I think we can move to Rwanda so that uh, just note the comments, uh, the the questions that you might have, and then after we we go through all the presentation we can take a few questions and uh, we, we benefit from this diversity. I welcome uh, Pastor Fidel from Rwanda to share his experience from the land of a thousand hill. Welcome. His mic is muted. Ah, it's okay now. Hello, Pastor Fidel, your mic is muted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad to be one of the leaders speaking on this great uh, platform, and uh, I really thank God for for this, and uh, especially all leaders on this platform. May the Lord bless you so much. Also, it was a very great uh, uh, presentation from my sister uh, from the US. The Lord bless you. And uh, as you know, maybe I'll not be that uh, very, uh, very powerful English speaker because as you know, Rwanda, has been in French system and we just recently shifted from, from French to English. That's why I am a French man, but by the grace of God, I can, I can express myself. I hope you will, you will get me. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I would like to talk about, uh, but I'm wondering, but we are in the same spirit. My sister has shared my uh, almost my almost uh, all my points. <laughs> That's good. Man. But uh, yeah, yes. But I would like to talk about the experience, what we are seeing here, and what we are we are experiencing in Rwanda uh, because of these uh, changing times. It is uh, something very great. It's very new, but we really thank uh, God for what he's doing in, uh, in the Church of Rwanda today. Uh, I would like to, to talk about two things. One is the church and how the Church of Rwanda is using technology today. Second, second I would like to share about 
the experience that we are seeing, we are going through in uh, home churches, home church services uh, during this time. Uh, technology, church on technology, to be honest, uh, I started, even I myself, uh, let me remind you that my church is a union of Baptist churches in Rwanda. I've been leading the headquarters of this church for six years. Six years in Kigali, the capital city has been doing and how the church is doing today. Uh, I say, even me, in terms of technology, I started using this kind of uh Yeah, he's talking about technology and we can uh, see some of the challenges. I hope he'll come back. Maybe his oh yes, internet problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Bishop Christopher you will be ready. I think uh, let's see if he comes back. Uh, okay, I think he has disconnected. So we once he comes back, he will take over from there. But let me shift to Bishop Christopher Wanyeki uh, to give also an experience uh, from the Kenyan uh, context. And then we hear from our participants after that. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you, thank you. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. I was muted. muted. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah, I can just wave. Yes, yes. Okay, you getting you. That's good. <laughs> that's good. So, greetings to every one of you. Um, this is uh, another wonderful day that uh, we can come together and share uh, experiences and what we have gone through at uh, this particular time. Uh, great sharing from Jockey there. Um, that was great. We really um, needed that. We needed to hear that. Thank that you. opens our mind on some of the things that we are not doing as you people are doing. I know it is different. Uh, the way we do here will be different from the way you do things down in, uh, in the U.S. Yeah. But all in all, uh, ministry is ministry. And ministry is a service to the people. And so people are people everywhere, whether in the U.S. Yeah. or in Kenya. So we, we, we take this opportunity to say thank you again for, uh, to you. Let me begin by saying, at this time, when this thing happened, <laughs> I think uh, most churches in, in Africa were caught, uh, uh, you know, unprepared. Um, we have so many churches that actually do not believe in changes and they have been held, they have been holding on to the orthodox way of doing church. Uh, that is uh, what we know uh, from, our, from our fathers. Uh, that is what we carry on. But this situation has come at a time when actually we needed a change. And this change has come, well, of course, with the pain. There's a cost for it. But it is going to leave us better. When it is over, we shall always say, thank God for Corona. <laughs> Although some people will have died. <laughs> but there are things that will change. Especially the church. The time, the church is having very difficult time. One, we never thought that a day would come when we cannot go to church. I mean, I never thought about that. From my days in Sunday school, uh, 
to, 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 to whatever I have never thought that one day will come when I cannot go to church. Mm -hmm. It has come. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? And I think that is uh, what found so many of us pastors, uh, church pastors, that we did not have uh, an answer for that. And I want to tell you, I don't know how many pastors we have on the line, but actually the first Sunday was total confusion. We did not know what to expect, what to do. <laughs> Some of us just read to prayer, <laughs> lock ourselves in the church and pray, uh, probably asking for a wise word from the, uh, from the Lord. Yeah. But thank God after that, mm -hmm. it has given us um, a way out. We are now thinking and moving out. Uh, doing ministry in whatever way we can. Uh, we are not all of us doing the same. But one thing is that is for sure. In our own ways, we are doing ministry. And I believe even if we are not doing it to uh, perfection, we are doing something. Amen. Now, when I look at this, there are three questions that I would like to, uh, to address. Three things that I would like to address. And uh, in form of questions, because these are the problems that came to us when this thing came. The first thing was, and that is exactly what the pastor is asking even today, how can I reach out to members? How can I reach out to members? Now, and that is what has cost us, has brought us where we are using all manner of media, uh, WhatsApps, uh, Facebooks, uh, Zooms. We are using everything that we can. Uh, we are using texts. So, so technology has come handy into the ministry. And today, church and ministry is actually the same. You know, there is a time I have attended conferences in Kenya and outside Kenya, where we were addressing the subject of church and technology. And let me tell you, some of us thought that technology is something that is too high, we don't need it. But today, we cannot do anything without it. It is through that technology that we can, able be, we can be able to communicate. Now, first question was how uh, can I reach out to members? The second thing that every pastor is asking, even those who are online right now, are asking, how can we continue in ministry? You know, because ministry uh, is not something that you send to me. Sometimes ministry has to be something that is tangible and, and something that is um, physical. I have to see you. But now, that's another question. The third question is, how do we do our pastoral care? Yeah? And how do we continue with our pastoral care? You and I know when we talk of pastoral care, we are talking of a little touch. This is someone who is there, has a need. They need to hear from you. They need to see you. Because much of what happens when we are taking care of people, and especially in pastoral care, happens through our gestures, our touch, you know, our feelings. You know, when I touch that brother or that sister, when I hug her, when I, you know, all those things. How are we going to do it? And so the ministry seems to be so, so um, superficial, something that is not there. You cannot touch it. But let me say, this calls for a pragmatic think thinking, a pragmatic thinking. We need to think outside the box. And so, like anyone else, and I'm so grateful uh, for what uh, our sister has just put it. Thank you. You are more prepared than we are. <laughs> because you, <laughs> you are able to present yours in that way. We could read and write. We have taken some notes from you. Thank you. Now, um, some of us just got in to do things uh, the way we can, using our small uh, devices, um, our, our headsets, phones, um, 
our computers and whatever we can to be able to reach out. Now, let me begin by saying that uh, for us to continue, we, we, we thought that church is number one is fellowship. Me and my God. A fellowship between me and God and then a fellowship between me and people. Now, fellowship within, between me and God, there is no doubt. I mean, I know how I do it. But fellowship with my fellow members, that is where the problem comes in. So what do we do? What we can only do is to create a fellowship for ourselves. How do we create that fellowship? I think uh, Joki has explained this very well because she has put that thing there very properly well, that there are many avenues that we can reach out to be able to communicate one with another and none of us will feel that I am alone. I will not be alone. Very important for us, you know, to be able to reach out to every one of us um, at least once in a, after two days, let somebody hear, let somebody know, that somebody cares, yeah, that, that creates a form of a fellowship, a form of a fellowship, especially in the WhatsApp where everybody can just write something. Some people will say amen. Some people will put a simile that uh, puts the two hands together, you know, uh, whatever. But people feel that they are not alone. There, is, uh, there are other people uh, who they are working with. Um, this is very important. Because uh, it brings us together. Now, there is the aspect of praying together, which is very important, that brings the church uh, along. I am remembering my days when I was back in school in the 80s in the U.S. That was in the mid-80s. And um, we would take numbers from each one of us, from different uh, people, from different states, uh, and we would call each other in a conference uh, a call, a a and we would pray. We had set times of prayer where we were praying together. Those days, this kind of technology was not there, you know? Uh, so we were using the normal phone. You remember the normal phone? Um, the one you, you dial the number, you know, and the mkanda, you know, you have to have that mkanda up there. And uh, we used to pray together. Uh, and we would prepare, we would organize a conference uh, for prayer, where we would pray together, a guy from Seattle, a guy from Virginia, a guy from Kentucky, Tennessee, coming together, and all of us are praying together. I've said. So if we are praying, it will be possible to pray with so many of them. And what we are doing is to encourage people that let us create a time of prayer so that we can pray together. This will help us to continue reaching out to one another and let us also know the needs of the people. Because unless we know what you are going through, it will be difficult for us to help you. So you have to say how and what um, is your need. And this is helping uh, so much. It is helping us. We've been seeing uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of response, of course. Of late, people have been gathering uh, foods and other needs, um, other, other materials, where we can share with those who have very little. And uh, uh, some of whom are not working today. Their jobs were closed. Some of the jobs they were doing depended on the jobs that were closed. So they were the second, uh, the second um, level uh, of those businesses. And so what we do is we gather uh, food, we gather those things that they need, and we are able to reach out and, uh, and touch them. So technology has come very well. This is good. It's helping us. I think we need to take it to another level um, so that we can be able to do it uh, much better. Now, this is also bringing... Uh, a new understanding, uh, something that we probably we will think now. And that is, mostly, 
many churches, the work of the ministry is left to the people who are employed in that church. So that is the pastor, uh, the pastors that are working there, and a few people that are working there. But time has come that we got to go out and let everybody be a participant in the ministry. That is, we have to allow, uh, we have to bring people together so that we, they may be able to serve others. Where I cannot go, they will go. And this is what we are doing today. You know, um, from last year, God just put a burden in my heart within our church that we have to go, we have to now come down to smaller groups. And we started organizing for small groups. And we have been training, we trained people last year how to, uh, to, 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 how to run a small group. And we started what we are calling today a house church. A house church is not a new idea. It's an idea, it's something that is happening everywhere. But we were training them so that they can become pastors of those small, small uh, home fellowships. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that the small fellowships have worked well because at this particular time when churches are not meeting, me as a pastor, I will not be able to, 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 to meet 200 people or to know where everybody is and what they're doing. But thank God for the leaders of these small groups. Because every person who has a group of 17, a group of 20, they know them by their names. They know their families. They know what they're going through. And it is very easy now to minister to them. This is what um, now answers our third question. How we, do we do pastoral care? Now, pastoral care today is mostly in our church is taken by these groups. They are the ones who are reaching out. Of course, you know, we were, we were told not to meet in the church. We don't have a service in the church. You don't meet, uh, you know, you cannot meet somewhere uh, when you are more than 10. But you can meet somebody in their home. <laughs> and this is what the groups are doing. They are finding these families in their homes and reaching them out touching them, praying with them, and moving out. So ministry continues. Uh, in a time like this, when we have this kind of situation, um, which Brother Joseph just said, this is a, a crisis leadership, and crisis leadership therefore opens people to think critically. And we have to think in that way. How are we going to reach out? And so we have people reaching out and getting uh, people where they are. The other thing now, on their spiritual growth. How do they grow? You know, uh, just by sending, um, a, 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 you know, a blessing, a word through um, WhatsApp or a text or something may not be enough. We need to have something else that every member of the church is going through. And so we were able to tailor made a course for every one of them. You know, and some of these things we don't have even to create. They are already there. They are already created. And we are using a system that is called DJJ. That is Disciple, uh, Discipleship Journey with Jesus. Some of you may have had it. A very nice program where it is a 13-week program, which will take them for 13 weeks. After 13 weeks, we shall have that quarter finished and get another quarter. And so this keeps people together. Whatever, you know, what is being studied in this group here, a small group here, another group is studying the same. These people grow the same. My friend, let me remind you, all of us who are on the, uh, online, Corona comes like a season. And seasons come and seasons go. When we come back, we don't want to have a fragmented church. We want to have a church that has been growing together in the same level. And that's why we thought of having uh, something that people can read together. They read together, they answer questions together, and the church at the office where I am, I am the one who is making follow-up and asking questions sometimes so that I may know that every family is reading. 
So we have this course for every family. And, and, and let me tell you, some of the families are reading this together, together with their families, with their children. And, and, and you know, it has become very interesting uh, when they are giving testimonies of what the Lord is doing. I just want to say this. There must be some things that we have learned. <laughs> Having said what we are doing, <laughs> let me just mention what we have learned. What have we learned in this critical uh, time? There are several things that we have learned. Number one, we have learned that technology must be key in our ministry. And we cannot do ministry without technology. So from here on, we are going to invest more in technology. Yeah, we may not be uh, able to do so much, but I think uh, looking and being a bit with a, with a uh, looking at what technology carries on, I know there is, a, 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 there is something for every local church. There is something. So we have learned that technology has to be done. The other thing that we have learned out of this is that church, unless you are doing what we call traditional church, where we come to church on Sunday only for worship, how we come to church on Sunday for that. But if you are doing church as a ministry, then time has come for us to begin to consider what was happening in Jerusalem. That is, they had their fellowship together, they had, you know, the, the, the reading of the word together, and house to house, small groups. Yes, this is, this is very important because I have seen it work. It is working well for us. And by the way, I'm writing a book on that, which is going to uh, uh, an advanced level. Uh, probably you will see that in my book. But, but what we are saying is this. It is very important that the church, you know, begin now to look at what uh, Peter tells us the priesthood of all believers. Yes, let us not to look at the clergy out there. Yes, the clergy can give direction. The clergy will give us organization, but we must allow people to go to do the ministry. Today, the churches that are touching lives uh, today, in this situation, most of those churches are churches which have allowed, which have allowed these uh, groups to work out there. Just as what my sister said, that a group are uh, 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 leaders of groups. Yeah, because the pastor cannot reach everywhere. So that's one area, that's two areas that we have learned, that technology uh, and uh, small group works very well. Now, even after this, this is what we have learned. We did not have this kind of uh, um, uh, system of reaching out. But even after this, we have decided time has come. <laughs> you know, we are doing it in Facebook. We are doing it in uh, YouTube. We are doing it everywhere. We just started the other day because of Corona. But let me tell you, we are so charged that even after Corona, this thing is now going on. In our place, we have come together and we are saying we need to have a full press uh, studio and a ministry that will be reaching out through technology. So, so I think it is not only me alone, but many, many, many other pastors, many, many other churches are seeing it that way. Now, what are the benefits? Because also, remember, Bible says all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called by his own purpose. So whatever comes, it brings us Something good is left with us. And did I hear Mzungu say long time ago, in every storm, in every storm, there is a silver line. Oh yes, there is a silver line. Even within this uh, corona thing, my friend, there's something good that will come out of it. And I believe some of those things that will come out of it is that from now on, from now on, you'll be reaching more people than the ones you're reaching. Let me say, when we started, um, you know, streaming through that uh, Facebook and YouTube, I couldn't believe 
We are reaching people that we could never reach. Yeah? I have friends in the uh, US, I have friends in uh, UK, I have friends in Pakistan. A and the moment we started releasing this, I started seeing them now coming on board. You know, they, 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 they are now commenting on what we are preaching. We are able to reach many more people. Here in the country, the same. And I believe it is happening for every pastor who is doing this. So friends, it is important that we don't just see it um, as, a, as totally something that was so bad, but let us seek the good that was in this. Now leadership, as we, as we have just said, um, Joseph just alluded to that, talking about uh, resistance versus uh, resilience. And that's what happened. You can remember how we resisted. We resisted the following week on, on 29th, the 29th of, uh, I think, of March. We had so many pastors arrested. The following Sunday, they were also arrested. What were we doing? We were resisting. Resisting. Now, after we saw what is happening, we started now going back and saying, well, maybe we need to, to think and do it the way we can be able to reach out. Resilience now comes in. That whether we fall down, we must rise up. Yes, we may be down, but we must look for ways to go up. Resilience. And the other very important thing, because we are speaking as leaders here and in a critical or crisis leadership, it's very important that a leader must be adjustable. You cannot be rigid, that you cannot change. You know, I come from the old school, myself in the church, that believed what was taught to us, that is the truth. If someone else comes with another truth, he must be a curse. But you see, again, times and changes, and times have changed. Times are dynamic. We are here now. I heard somebody say that Jesus did not go around healing people in the church, but he healed the people in the streets. I say that was Jesus' time. Our time, we have churches. We can heal people in the church. In Jesus' time, there was no church. Yeah. In Jesus' time, he rode a donkey. In my time, I'm riding a vehicle. So we cannot hold on to that, uh, what was there. We must begin to adjust with the times and adapt the, the technology and the things that are out there that we can use. And that way, we shall be able to reach out and touch uh, the lives of our people. It is very important that we learn, we learn to do what is good, what is good for our time and our season. Yeah, I finish by this. Bible says in the book of Acts that after David had served his own generation, his own generation, you know, he rested. That means he died with his fathers. And he was buried to be with his fathers. But Bible talks about Je David and his generations. This is our generation. And our generation, the, gen the David generation, did not have what we have. So we must take what is there in our generation and serve our generation with whatever we have. And that's why we cannot afford not to invest in technology. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's uh, appreciate Bishop Wanyeki. Yeah, we are so touched by those. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, those great comments. Uh, I see Pastor Fidel is not yet back. So at this juncture, I will wonder to invite the participants so that uh, from the presentation that we have had or even from any other angle or you might uh, raise a question, a comment, uh, because this is an, it's a platform to be able to exchange and share. I can see someone from uh, 
South Sudan, but currently in Kenya. He's asking us to pray for that country. So I think as we conclude, because there are challenges to do with the communication, and I think this is one of the major issues that we have had. So we'll remember to pray for him as we conclude. But at this juncture, we have listened to uh, Rosemary Washira from uh, Maryland. Uh, we listened a bit from uh, Pastor Fidel from Rwanda. And then now uh, we have listened to Bishop uh, Wanyeki from Kenya. Let me open this platform. If you are ready, if you can write your question, it's good. But if you can uh, voice it out, just uh, wave and then we'll uh, give you the, the platform to continue. You're welcome. So whoever is ready, whoever has a comment, yeah, let me go back to our sister, uh, Rosemary Karibu. I just wanted to comment uh, the group, the Pastor Bishop Wanyaki's group, that he uh, they wrote a book, actually a program uh, during this. I mean, it was already there, but he said they rewrote it for everybody so that the groups can use it and have the same growth. I thought that was very impressive uh, to have, and that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have been apart for for months. And I think we are going to be apart for a few more months here. So doing that as a group, you all grow together. By the time you come back as a church, you're at the same place. And I yes. think that's a very good, that's a very good to continue doing. That's true. Thank you so much. So any comment, any question? Kindly, uh, this is the time before I get to the conclusion part. Yeah, Pastor Kahindi, uh, please continue. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just use this time to express my gratitude and uh, to all the, um, the speakers. I have at least taken one or two things from each and every one of you. Our moderator and our sister in America, uh, Rosemary, uh, you put it very succinctly. And uh, Bishop, Bishop, uh, you have uh, uh, spoken quite a number of things. And the one that even my sister took attention of is um, this issue of the, of the book or uh, this uh, Bible study. Uh, that one caught my attention extremely. And I'm just wondering, uh, is what you have something that can be shared or is it specifically for you only? I'm talking of me borrowing, so it can help me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it can be shared everywhere. Great, great. Then, uh, then I'll get in touch through our moderator. Yes. You'll be assisted there. Thank you very please much. Please do, please do. I will organize that for you. Thank you so much. I think it's clear from uh, the comments I've listened. We're talking about the unity of the church. And I, that is one thing that is coming out so clear in this period. Uh, the boundaries as the way globalization is taking shape, the way the unity of the body of the church is also getting back to that uh, unified entity as it's supposed to be. Okay, I think uh, it's noted. We'll follow up. We'll follow up on that. Uh, I saw another hand from uh, Ochuho James. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I hope everyone is getting me, hearing me. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to. Uh, this is special forum, and uh, it's good to learn from uh, past, uh, uh, Bishop Wanyeki, and uh, also from our sister from US, and uh, from each and every speaker that have spoken. I've been following so keenly, and uh, as I said before, Ali, that uh, I am from South Sudan, and uh, currently I'm in Kenya, and I'm a student at uh, African Nazarene University. And uh, we, we have members back at home uh, and you know, 
in our our country is the youngest country in Africa. If you can not even in Africa, I can say in the world, uh, because we just got some independent some uh, some time is ago. Uh, currently, like what uh, Pastor Wanyeki was saying, that uh, uh, maybe sharing these things at home, having a very small group, is a very good is a very good uh, idea that some of us have been practicing it even here in Nairobi. But, uh, but one thing also um, we are facing is that, uh, like in our country, we don't have internet that you'll be able to, to gather you. Uh, maybe you come online like the way we are doing now. Uh, 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 for example, that was some week ago, uh, a pastor was arrested in the church because he forced to go to the church uh, that there is no internet that he can do service from his house to his uh congregations and uh, he was uh, he was arrested and currently he's having one man in prison just because of uh, breaking breaking the laws the rules that uh, people are supposed to go to stay at home but he decided to go to the church so that is why i was requesting that we pray for our country the soldiers are so ha are so harsh to the congregations that you try even when they hear you are praying maybe at home they will need to know how many numbers and how many are you where did you come from? Are you the members of the family? Yeah, so that is the thing that you are currently facing. Our members are calling. The things are not well. You just have to pray for us. And uh, Otherwise, uh, as, as, uh, as Bishop said before, this corona people will learn from it a lot of things. And it has impact on many, many, many things, uh, especially to men and the families. You know, F many families have come now together. Uh, at least someone will spend a time with their family and... Uh, but we thank God because uh, everything that happened under the, under the sun, there is always an awareness of God. And God knows at why things is happening. Yeah, so let us, not, uh, let us just stand as Christian and we believe that uh, everything has got end. It started and it will go and it will just end. So otherwise, I'm so grateful and uh, I love uh, the presentations from everyone and uh, I'm also... Uh, Father uh, Reference Bishop Wanyoiki, thank you so much. And uh, I hope maybe one day we, we're going to meet and we, we see some of the ideas. Even if it is not meeting, uh, we'll just share. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so uh, otherwise, that is what I can say. And may the Lord bless you. Pray for us. Thank mm. you. Thank you so much, Brother James. Any other comment, observation, question? I will, uh, I will take a few as a summary of what we have talked about. Uh, but uh, if, is there, is, if there is none, I will move on to that conclusion. Okay. So let me do a very quick uh, summary as I conclude the small presentation I had, but at the same time, I want to pick up a few issues that have come out from the, our discussion today. This is one of the books that I'm writing in this season on crisis leadership. And I think uh, what is calling out now is that a crisis fit leader is a visionary leader. I think we need to keep on addressing the current issues, but not losing sight of the vision. That's very important. Uh, we attach people to the vision more than to ourselves. And then leading for a purpose, people want to be connected to something greater, something more, uh, more greater than even a leader. So if we hook them to the purpose, because I think the big challenge now is how do we maintain the momentum? Bishop Wanyeki talked about the vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship. Yeah, so purpose and then that heart of servant. Uh, Rosemary Washira has talked about how, what the church is doing in terms of uh, reaching out to the community. So that's becoming relevant to the current prevailing conditions within society. And then a mindset that is motivated by zeal to transform humanity for the better. 
I tried to sample a few definitions of leadership and I felt this is really what can take us through by remaining anchored on the vision, but uh, remembering what I talked about, ambidextrous leadership, looking far, but taking care of where we are currently. So in conclusion, on the short, short term measures or short term issues, and uh, this is, I prepared this in advance, but uh, the participants have already tackled this. We talked about in terms of short term, lead through virtual teams, meetings and uh, remote work. Uh, our sister has talked about prayer meetings via Zoom. So we can optimize on these uh, platforms. Initially, when we started, the challenges were quite immense, but I think with the time, we have continuously adopt, adapted and people are rising up to the challenge. So we can't shy away from the challenge. We have to get into it. And then as we get into the challenge, slowly by slowly, everyone will start uh, adjusting as we move on. We have the issue of uh, collaboration. I like the point that uh, has come from uh, the first speaker where churches are connecting with other churches so that those churches that may have more resources, they can help those churches that have little resources. I wish this is a, a, a a co and a concept and an approach that as the church in Kenya, the church in Rwanda, and the church in South Sudan, and the global church can adopt because we are all serving the same, uh, you, uh, the same uh, uh, human or humanity. And uh, this is really very strong point. I think I've noted it as very strong. So collaboration, it's something that we can initiate Short term, I mean, we can take it from now and start working on it. The issue of shared leadership, this has come out very strong. Bishop Christopher Wanyeki has talked about uh, the home church. And I think it's, this is teaching us or is really bringing the issue of, uh, if you had a strong shared leadership approach, then the church can still continue to survive, even if we are scattered. So uh, issue of enhancing our cascaded leadership to home church is very key and uh, I think it's very important. Investing on more on the 20%, the 20% we're talking about the leaders, the, who will impact the 80%, which is the congregation. So uh, the first point we talked about virtual meetings, and I think that relationship with leader to leader through this kind of platform has to be more frequent and more enhanced because even a leader needs a leader. Even a leader needs encouragement. Uh, so if we connect with other leaders, then that such kind of uh, opportunities, we can be able to harness them. So invest more on the 20% now and in the future. I think the churches that had really invested on their 20%, they are still somehow uh, flowing much easier because the 20% is now taking care of the 80%. And the load on the pastor is more uh, smaller, but the church that did not really identify the 20% and invest more on, on that 20%. Yeah. 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 So uh, that is very important. Perpetual learning and unlearning. The two key words that are coming on board today is learning and unlearning. Bishop Christopher Wanyeki has talked about a traditional church. And now we are talking about church as a ministry. So it's church on the go. It is church, what our sister was saying, you move with a car and you are distributing, you are sharing. And that is purely what church is all about. The last point on the short term is a reactional measure. What do we do to survive? Because we all want to survive. So in the short time, we want to survive, then we can address the long-term issues as we move on. And uh, this has come out clearly on the presentation uh, that we have received. On, on the other hand, long-term, we need to build a culture that embraces change and adaptability and technology. We have to invest intentionally on technology, not a, a by the way, but it's now a core a core item 
as uh, in terms of budgeting. So invest more on IT infrastructure. Also enhancing collaboration, the unity of the body of Jesus Christ. This from uh, the many platforms that we have seen, we are now talking about uh, uh, enhancement of the unity of the body of Jesus Christ. You will have people from all denomination, like in this forum, we had a mix of so many denominations, and this is really very interesting and uh, very uh, uh, something to comment. In terms of long term, enhance effective communication, clarity of action or purpose, and maintaining trust and relationship. This has been mentioned by our sister Rosemary uh, when she was, pre uh, she was presenting. And then the other term in long term, we need to ground the 80% more. What Bishop Wanyeki talked about. The 80% now they are on their own. But if they are grounded, they are not on their own. They will maintain the vertical relationship. Because now it's about uh, where church across. So this is something that we need to uh, move with it as we uh, conclude in this session. And then the last thing is that we need to uh, enhance more on the proactive. We talked about change of us, slow change, and change agents. Change agents are always proactive. We can only thrive by becoming proactive and exploring or exploiting the opportunities that are coming on board during this particular time that we are facing. But I want to conclude by saying this. Uh, in John 16, 33, the Bible says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The captain overcame. We, as the team in this boat, we are also not going to capsize, but we shall be able to overcome. So I really want to appreciate you. And uh, uh, I think just to re-echo what our first speaker said, the quicker we adjust, the better. Secondly, we need to connect more with other churches. We need to reach out to those in need in our community. We need to use the resources that we, we have even to be able to address the community. I think now I talked about how people behave in a crisis. It's all about survival. It's all about self-preservation. So as much as we may want them to come to us, they are also waiting for us to get to them because their instincts have been provoked by this crisis. So they are trying to safeguard themselves, try to safeguard whatever little they have. And that is psychological. And I think when we understand how people behave in a crisis, then we know how to be able to, to help them during those particular uh, moments. Uh, Bishop Wanyeki has talked about ministry is tangible as much as possible, as much as now we are operating in the technological arena. I think this is something that will continuously innovate on how do we reach out to the people uh, and make ministry tangible as it's supposed to be. So with those few comments, I want to take maybe final comments from, uh, I think we are, we are not that many now. Maybe I can take just, as, uh, just a, a simple statement from uh, each participant, but I'll start with the first presenter, uh, our sister Rosemary Washira. If you can hear me, you are closing comments. And then I will move on to Bishop Christopher Wanyeki and the rest as we come to the conclusion. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> I was trying to uh, also connect with the other church, but I was listening. Uh, I appreciate being connected to this international group. I appreciate being part of uh, this modern day communication. And I would just encourage us to use the media platforms to reach the body of Christ, to reach everyone uh, as we're doing and uh, to have a global impact. Uh, we start small, but small steps make big success. So whatever we are, uh, whatever we do, using, using technology to reach everybody, it will, bless, it will bless somebody that we don't even know of. We're using media. 
So I thank you so much for, partic for allowing me to participate. Thank you. Thank you so much for insightful. We have learned a lot from you, very practical, and we really appreciate. Uh, Bishop Wanyeki, please. Okay, um, also very grateful uh, for being a participant in this meeting. And I hope this is not the last one. We shall have many more. And uh, this is where we come and, um, you know, um, try to, 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 to educate one another in the ways that we can do ministry and do ministry together. None of us has the monopoly of wisdom of how to run a church or how to do ministry. All of us need one another. And so uh, I just thank God that uh, we have this kind of a forum where we can share our experiences. And uh, through those experiences, we'll begin now to look deep into what we are doing. We have, I would say that I have um, uh, gotten a lot from our sister. And uh, these are some of the things that uh, we are going to put into uh, consideration. Some of the things I, she mentioned there, we are going to look at them. How can we do them in there? Yeah. How can we contextualize them and, and, and bring them to our own here in Kenya? Um, and also what you people, uh, especially you have shared about uh, leadership. This is very important. And I believe all the other guys who have been listening, every one of us have something that we can share. So it is very important and we are so grateful and especially me, I'm very happy uh, being a participant in this meeting. So next time, please uh, let me know when. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Bishop. <laughs> Pastor Kahindi, please. Hello. Uh, mine is to say thank you. I uh, thank you who organized it and every speaker who's uh, uh, spoken today and all the participants. Uh, this is God sent. I have picked quite a number of things which I will run along with immediately uh, because I see they'll be very helpful. Uh, and uh, to echo the words of the ones who have just spoken before me, uh, since we have learned a lot, I think this is a good thing that we do from time to time because uh, sharing, as the uh, bishop said, nobody has the monopoly, so it will help us more and more. Thank you very much and may God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Anne Maina. Uh, for the moderator. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I want just to say thank you for the moderator and everyone that has spoken. You have really inspired me because uh, there are some things, uh, being a reader, there are some of the things that, that I was thinking, how do I reach to my group? But now I think uh, this meeting has been an eye opener to me. And I found out, even as our sister was speaking and talking about how do you play with a group? Uh, I didn't know that I can still use this platform and I do it. And now I understand it better. And I'm very grateful. Thank you so much uh, for this. It has really enlightened me and opened my eyes. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anne Maina. Uh, Daniel Ngigi. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. First and foremost, I would like to give lots of thanks to the Almighty God for this opportunity uh, that we have been able to congregate together in a forum like this, and much has been shared. Thank you for the moderator for giving us this opportunity, organizing such a successful uh, meeting. It has truly inspired me. And um, as a leader, I believe for the few points I've been able to pick, they are going to help me reach out to my group and at least keep uh, praising and uplifting the Almighty God. To the participants, thank you also. Because without you, we would not have shared these ideas 
and we believe that we are going to put them into practice. It might not be just today, not tomorrow. Even Rome was not built in a day. But I believe it's a journey that we've started and a long journey starts with a milestone. So definitely the few ideas that you have been able to pick, I believe they are going to help us. And uh, to crown it all, after every storm, there is a silver line. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, Brother James, your final con comments? I would like to say thank you so much for organizing this uh, meeting and prayer. And uh, I know it is not easy. Uh, this is the this might be the first time in this 21 century that even neighbors are praying on Zoom. Yeah, but <laughs> now we <laughs> yeah, uh, but now we need to remember that uh, there is always time for everything and uh, everything that happened. As I said before, it happened for a reason and it is for a purpose. So therefore, I would like us to pray, and we keep on at least. If this forum will continue like this. It will be good, and we we also we all, let us also remember that there are also others who are struggling uh, like during this uh, time. There are others who are struggling because of the, you are you are told not to go to the street. You are not told told to go and hustle, but we need also to see and we look at other people below us, whoever person. I know this is the time that people will come and say they will be in need of what they just want to sustain life for this moment. It's a very critical time, but uh, I need us to put it in the hand of God and we pray that God to help us. And as, at the same time, I understand also, it is a time that if someone has, he or she will say, ah, because of this corona, if I give, I might, I might be locked inside. I, I want us to believe that, uh, let us not have that in mind and we pray that, uh, because even in the Bible it is written that uh, if you give, you will receive. So this is time for us also to help our fellow, our fellow Christians, our fellow human beings that are struggling with this coronavirus without even anything for their own food, even a place to sleep. We really need to pray and we put everything in the hand of God. Above all, I believe and I trust that the Lord is going to stop this and we shall be back to normal life. So otherwise, thank you so much and let us keep up and let us keep on in touch with one another with this room and uh, god is going to bless god will listen to all the prayers because this is also the thing that connect us connect where all over the world yes i'm so grateful and may the lord bless you thank you thank you so much uh, charity karura charity karura you can hear me uh, martin Shagan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say thank you for such a wonderful program. And I appreciate a lot the friend who invited me to join such program. It's been a great time. And uh, we thank God. It might have hit us differently that we have had... Uh, to shut down our churches and worship from home but we still thank God because even in the Bible we see a lot of instances where people had to worship from home and uh, the main issue is how do we spread the message and I think one of our speakers really dealt with that and uh, it's been possible through social media platforms such as this that we have continued to share the message and we thank God. We pray that we, as time goes by, we are going to adopt more and we are going to have more technological infrastructure to help us share the message. Above all, we pray that may God help us through and sustain us through this period that after it all, will have been drawn closer to God because you realize that now that people are not going to churches, a lot of us are feeling strained. And as I discuss with friends, you many times hear them say that, I know that when churches will reopen, 
most of us are going to get back to church on a serious note. And we pray that by the end of it all, may God help us to learn more of him than learning of ourselves. Otherwise, thank you very much. And I hope to have, we'll have such programs more often. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Martins. Uh, Charity, or Caro. Caro, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, I can me... hear you. Okay, yes, Caro. I can hear you. You're welcome, yes. Caro. Thank you very much. I came in late. However, I'm enjoying the session. Thank you very much, our moderator, for organizing all this, You're that welcome. we could meet with other people. And um, I wish you could share the notes. Uh, I'm seeing that it's a learning curve. I thank God for this opportunity. And I'm learning that I need to do more in these changing times, especially technologically. Thank you very much for the forum. I will participate more in this when you organize. Thank you very much. And for all the participants, I also thank you uh, for your, 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 your availability and also your, 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 your thoughts and your words of encouragement. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pastor Caro. I could not see your photo. That's why I was uh, trying to figure out who it is. But I really appreciate. Uh, okay. Yeah, I want to appreciate everyone, our, our presenters. I have been saying uh, this is a time to invest, to invest in the lives of people, to invest in the hearts of people. And I think for leadership, uh, what now counts now in the moments of crisis is, is uh, livelihood and is humanity. Uh, the arrest will follow. Uh, the economy will follow and all the other aspects will follow. But uh, we want to flow together and get through this tunnel because the light is already showing on the other side. So we need just to keep on holding hands and moving together. We are expecting to have a, a second uh, round. This was a third round, actually. This was our second uh, uh, conference. We're expecting to have another one on 24th May. And we'll be talking about uh, uh, this topic, the predictions about the future church and shifting church attendance. So we want to engage more on uh, these topics. This is a research that was done but I will continue to advance on the research as we look on practical issues that we can be able to share on 24th of May, but we'll keep you posted and we shall share more details as we continue. At this juncture, allow me to request uh, Bishop uh, Christopher Wanyeki to conclude uh, for us with a word of prayer as he remembers uh, South Sudan and about the issues that uh, our brother uh, talked about. Thank you so much. God bless you. I hand over to, Pastor, to Bishop Christopher Anik for to conclude. Thank you. Let us all pray. Let us all thank God. And uh, let us keep our faith alive and hope alive. Yes, we can say with David, we shall live and not die to see the great deeds of our God. Very important to keep hope alive. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the honor. We thank you for such a time like this, whereby we can come together from different nations, from different cities, and from different estates to come and discuss about your church. Father, we may be coming from different denominations, but all of us belong to Jesus. And we know that the church belongs to you. And all of us are part of this church. We pray today that you will continue to give us wisdom and understanding that we may be able uh, to move together as we do the work of the ministry. It is your word, mighty God, that we go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Lord, that is what we want to do. And we cannot do that alone. We can only do that when we are all together. And when we are together, we shall be able to finish the Great Commission. We thank you, Father. Thank you for every brother, every sister here. Thank you, Lord, for the 
brothers uh, and sisters who have been very, very, very candid in their sharing. And we thank you, Father, that that wisdom was brought to us. We thank you for our moderator because, Lord, you have put this in his heart and he has done this once and again to bring us together uh, so that we can share our experiences. May you continue to bless him. Enlarge his boundaries. Heavenly Father, cover him with your wisdom. And Lord, because wisdom and understanding and skills come from you, may you continue to shower it upon him and upon every member that is here today. We thank you, Father. And Lord, we are praying for the next meeting that is coming, that Lord, you will equip us, all of us, to have something that we can share together on the way forward and how we are going to do the work of the ministry that is post COVID-19. We thank you and we give you praise because you are our God. Bless every one of us today as we go back home. We, play, we pray for your blessings back at home. Yes, Lord, back in the ministry, continue to lay your hand upon each one of us. This we pray and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Yes. Thank, thank you. you so Amen. much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless God everyone bless and you. have a good day, a good night. Bye. 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 Bless the time. Yes. Mm. God bless. Love, Osha.